Uh, hello, uh, dear friends. Welcome to tonight's show, uh, Friday with Irina. Uh, tonight we will have um, the team uh, playing uh, for the initiative. Uh, it is uh, one of the main things I like to do in chess, to attack and to put the pressure on my, on my opponent in tactical positions. So, um, we will see one game of mine, which I played uh, last year in uh, Poland against Monika Sochko. Uh, let me let me make uh, this to be seen. Mm, here is here it is. I hope you see the chessboard and uh, you hear me well. Uh, tonight I have introduced also uh, a donation goal bar, so uh, if you like uh, the show and you want to support it, feel free to do it by uh, clicking the support uh, the stream button under um, the video on my Twitch channel. So, I guess we are ready to start. Once again, hi everyone. Um, Please, um, uh, please uh, say something uh, in the chat and feel free to ask questions and uh, join uh, my commenting uh, the game. So here we go. In this game, uh, I played e4, and my opponent uh, chose uh, the French defense by playing e6. Uh, it is uh, one of her main weapons d4, d5, knight to c3, bishop b4. Going for um, a very tactical uh, line, uh, the Vinaver. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I was coming after uh, a loss and um, I really wanted to uh, make up for it and uh, try to win the game. So I was happy to see this uh, line on the board, e5. Uh, here, um, well, uh, the main theory is with c5, then a3, bishop c3, b takes c3, and so on. But my opponent chose uh, another variation. She started with knight to e7. Uh, and that uh, allowed me to somehow um, go for a bit um, an unusual line, bishop d2. The main idea of which uh, is to capture on c3 with the bishop when the time comes. Uh, so bishop d2, she took, she took on c3 immediately and I took with the bishop on c3. Now you can notice that uh, white has the pair of bishops and also, uh, unlike in all the Vinaber variations, uh, we didn't uh, spoil our structure by taking uh, b takes c3. The game continued with b6, queen to g4, uh, the usual uh, square for the queen in the Vinaber, attacking the g7 pawn as well. Short castle followed. Well, until this point, my opponent was playing uh, very quickly, so it was clear for me that she was still in her preparation. While I was already unsure about the move orders, and I started to think uh, over the board. Well, uh, black has castled on the short uh, side. And uh, it is White's choice now if to castle on the same side or to go um, or to proceed with uh, long castle. Uh, here I decided to show my intentions immediately by playing the aggressive move h4. Well, uh, I think it is uh, a novelty, <laughs> one I found uh, over the board. The idea was. Um, to show my, my opponent very clearly that I'm in a fighting mood. And, uh, well, this move is very useful in these variations because it uh, prepares um, uh, this kind of manu rook maneuver, uh, which is meant to come to the attack uh, of the black king. 
Uh, well, it is clear that black should start doing something in the center or on the queen's side, as my king is not castled yet. She played c5. Knight f3 followed. All uh, logical moves until now. And bishop to a6. Well, it was the main idea of her previous b6 move to try to exchange these bishops. Because potentially, if my bishop would have time to go on d3, then all kind of sacrifices on h7 would be would be possible. Bishop takes a6, knight takes a6, h5. Now white threatens to play h6. So it was natural for black to prevent it by playing h6 herself. And here I could have played uh, bishop to d2, attacking the pawn h6 one more time. But then uh, knight f5 would follow, and after the natural c3, c takes d4, c takes d4, rook to c8. Now the long castle is no longer an option, and uh, my king is definitely not feeling fine in the center, so I would have to castle on the king side. But then the attack would uh, stop. So instead of bishop d2, I decided to go for knight to h4. Usually it is not a very good idea to place the knight on the, you know, to on the corner somehow of the board on the h file. But here it has a very concrete idea of not letting black's knight to come to f5. Uh, the game continued with c takes d4, bishop takes d4, all forced, and knight to b4. As you can see, black is threatening to take the pawn on c2 and also to deliver a very nasty fork. And it is white now who has to make a decision. What to do next? Well, I am waiting for suggestions. Uh, from the chat. Uh, how would you proceed in this position? What, uh, what could be White's idea here? Do you have uh, any suggestions? Uh, by the way, uh, greetings to everyone who has uh, just joined. Hmm. No suggestions so far. Well, I guess then I will have to show the move which uh, I chose to play. Uh, which was Long Castle. It involves uh, a pawn sacrifice. The pawn on a2, as you see, is hanging. But the, my idea was that uh, if black would take knight takes a2, then king to b1, knight b4, and here... Mm, okay, with white you don't even feel that the pawn on a2 is missing because, uh, okay, if for black it is very difficult to get to the a file with the queen, let's say. While c3 is a move which will uh, always help us to uh, make uh, the this uh, un somewhat unpleasant uh, knight uh, go away. So the game could possibly continue with bishop to e3 attacking the pawn on h6 and also attacking the knight on b4. A very unpleasant uh, double attack for, uh, for black. That's why my opponent wisely decided uh, not to capture the pawn on a2. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Hi Jakir Malik. Uh, the game continued with queen to c7. Well, threatening an obvious mate on c2. c3 followed. Now again, if, knight, if the knight takes on a2, then just king to b1 and knight is trapped. Uh, here my opponent had uh, an interesting choice. She could have played queen to c4, attacking the a2 pawn one more time, but probably wanted to uh, take it with the queen. Then b3 would be the natural move. And here an interesting sacrifice, queen to a6. The idea is that uh, I cannot capture the knight because of queen takes a2. 
threatening some rook a to c8 almost made and if rook to d2 then just queen b3 and black has uh, full compensation for the sacrificed piece well, instead at queen a6, I would have probably played rook to d2. So now the queen cannot capture on a2. And while the knight captures, I can go back to b1. And again, the knight on a2 is trapped. But that could have been an option for her. Instead, she chose to play rook a to c8. Bringing one more piece into the game and perhaps uh, wanting to play queen to c4 now. What would be the best continuation here? How do you think white should uh, continue the attack? I will give you a minute to think of it and to make some suggestions. I see no suggestions are coming so far then I guess I will have to just uh, continue with uh, presenting the game uh, it is a very interesting and uh, typical uh, move which I made here uh, rook to h3 well that was also the main idea of uh, pushing the h pawn to h5 uh, clearing uh, w the way for the rook. Now it has a double purpose. I want to bring the rook to the g-file, threatening uh, a mate on g7, while in, th in the same time this rook defends very well uh, the c3 pawn and potentially if we will have to play b3, then uh, there will be no uh, dangerous tactics. Black continued with uh, king to h7. Now she's ready to meet rook G3, uh, rook g3 with rook to g8 and somehow uh, our attack uh, has stopped here i felt that it is time to make some prophylaxis um, on the queen side and i play king to b1 the game continued with knight b to c6 well black uh, has to do something about that knight hanging on b4 and uh, f4 followed, defending the pawn on e5 and also um, keeping in mind that at some point we can advance uh, the pawn to f5. Here black decided to exchange uh, that knight for the bishop, knight d4, rook takes d4 and she brought the second knight to c6, rook to d1, b5. Well, it is obvious that black also wants to create some uh, threats against uh, white's king and probably the idea is uh, to play b4. Uh, what should uh, white do in this position? Well, I decided that it was time to regroup a bit the pieces by playing queen to e2. Also uh, threatening the b5 pawn, maybe we want to take it or maybe not, well it depends, sometimes it is not such a good idea to open up uh, one more line for your opponent. And black played the natural b4. I continued with c takes b4, knight takes b4 and a3 now. Well, queen c2 is um, not something we should fear in this position because after queen takes c2, black must capture back with the knight and here we see again that the knight is trapped. So maybe in some ways uh, this game was about uh, trapping, uh, trapping the knight on a2, on c2, you saw that there were many ideas uh, of things like that. So after a3, the most natural choice would be to go knight to c6, but instead my opponent uh, noticed uh, a nice uh, counter-attacking move and she played queen to e7. 
attacking the knight on h4. So now if white would take for example on b4, then queen takes h4 would follow and the pawn on f4 is hanging. Well, this is not um, a too dangerous threat because there are many moves to defend the f4 pawn. Well, we should also keep in mind that the rook on g3 is hanging as well. I didn't want to spoil my structure um, by doubling uh, the b pawns. So after queen e7, I played rook to h3, uh, clearing the way for this pawn to come to the attack of uh, black's king. Yeah, king b1, king b1 was a good prophylactical move, perhaps. Knight to c6 followed, and here, you probably have guessed right, white has to play g4. The most interesting is still ahead. Black played rook g to d8, maybe preparing d4, and here. Well, here white can play f5 or maybe something else, but I am very curious to see what are your suggestions in this position. How should white continue the attack? <clears throat> If you see any interesting moves, just uh, join the chat. I'll be reading that and see who can get it right. Well, I think that uh, enough time has passed. You should have uh, noticed the idea. Uh, in case you have not, it is g5. Uh, this uh, move uh, is linked to sacrificing at least one pawn, because as you can see, after h takes g5, if white captures back, then queen takes g5 happens and black is a pawn up and also the pawn on e5 is uh, hanging well that wouldn't be a great position for me but my idea was uh, slightly different after g5 h takes g5 the main idea was to play knight to f3 isn't it a beautiful move now black can either capture on f4 the pawn or uh, she can play also g4. Uh, unfortunately for her, this didn't wouldn't work because of uh, knight to g5 check, an intermediate move. And now after king to g8, queen takes g4 with a very dangerous attack. h6 is coming, rook to g1 perhaps. Well, black's king is definitely uncomfortable there. Instead, my opponent thought, why not to capture one more pawn and play g takes f4. The game continued with which move? What move do you think should uh, white make here? How to bring uh, one more piece into attack? Any ideas? Well, you see that uh, white has sacrificed already two pawns and if the attack doesn't succeed, then we'll be left with ruins here. So uh, we should do something uh, immediately. Uh, as I said, white is bringing one more piece into the game by playing rook to g1. Well, this is the minus of capturing on uh, f4. Oh, here, yeah. And now the g file is opened, and uh, my idea, you'll see a bit later, which it was. My opponent continued with king to h8, perhaps being afraid of some uh, knight g5 checks. Queen to g2 now, attacking the pawn on g7 and hey, that would be a mate, 
so uh, black has to do something about it queen f8 would be possible it would be one way to defend uh, against the mate but then knight to h4 would happen threatening knight g6 and then after f takes g6 okay let's just make a random move here just to illustrate uh, what the threat was knight to g6 f takes g6 forced h takes king to g8 and a beautiful mate is coming with rook h8 king takes queen h3 king to g8 and queen h7 mate well there are quite some moves i had to calculate here ahead but that is what makes chess so interesting. Well, so we saw that queen f8 wasn't a great idea. So black continued with rook to g8. Now how should, uh, how should white proceed in this position? I'll give you a moment to think about it. It is uh, another critical uh, moment of the game. Do you have any ideas in this position? How should white continue its attack? That chat is a bit lazy today. Hey guys, wake up. It's a bit late in Europe, but there is always time for some nice uh, tactics, don't you think? Any ideas? I am curious if anyone can spot this beautiful move, which almost received the beauty prize of the tournament. It was a nice tournament I played in Poland uh, in December last year. It was called uh, Poland versus the rest of the world match, where the national team of Poland was competing against um, an international, let's say, team, from which I was part as well. Uh, actually, that was a tournament when uh, I felt like playing very tactically, so I had uh, many interesting and uh, fun games. You can uh, search it uh, if you're curious about, uh, about that. What would be the continuation here? Come on, guys. I know that you can find it. Uh, I will give you some more time as uh, it might be not that easy to spot. Let's see. Let's see who's the first one who can notice it. Meanwhile, there are people asking where they can watch my show. Well, maybe I didn't do such a great job in advertising it. <clears throat> well, the time is up. I will show the move. Unfortunately, no one got it right. It was queen to g6. Well, we are uh, placing the queen um, under the pawn's um, attack, but uh, black cannot capture it because h takes g6 would be almost a mate. The only move is queen h4 and rook takes h4 mate. Well, it's a very unusual idea, I think. Uh, when I spotted it uh, during the game, I was really very happy and eager to put it on board. Though I had to be sure that it works. Because, uh, hey, queen g6 is a beautiful move. But then what is the threat? The answer is simple, actually. Uh, the threat is to play knight to g5, when f takes g6 wouldn't be possible because of the same h takes g6 uh, discovered uh, check and mate, and in the same time knight to g5 would threaten uh, uh, to deliver a mate on h7 with the queen, and also knight takes f7 would be a threat. So uh, here I already think it... Uh, 
it is impossible for black to defend uh, the king without giving up some uh, material. The game continued with queen to c5. What would be the idea of black here? Well, it is uh, quite obvious. Uh, black wants to create a threat against the rook on g1. So knight, now after knight to g5, then queen to g1, uh, black would be capturing a full rook. I could have played rook g to h1 maintaining my threat of knight to g5 but then maybe knight to d4 would be possible and now after knight to g5 queen to c2 check exchanging the queens um, well king to a1 rook g to f8 defending the pawn on f7 knight f7 king g8 and the position is perhaps uh, balanced here because i don't see any mate coming and probably white would have just to to be happy with a perpetual check here. Well, instead, uh, it is actually the case that many times uh, I remember a nice expression of one of my coaches that uh, when you want to do something, even if it doesn't work, and if you really, really want to make that move, maybe you can. So that's actually how I was thinking. Well, I really want to play knight g5 in this position. So, so what if she captures back, if she captures my rook? I can play king to a2 now, which I actually did. And now there are no checks. White wants to play queen to h7 mate. Also knight takes f7 would also be a mate. If f takes g6, then h takes g6. It's mate again. Despite the fact that we are down a queen, a rook, and some pawns, probably. Isn't it a nice mate? <laughs> well, so that is how I actually spotted this uh, knight g5. The only defense uh, for black is now to take queen takes g5 and to give away uh, the queen. That is what actually happened during the game. Queen takes g5, queen takes g5. Well, let's have a look now at the position. We have an extra queen for a rook and a knight. Uh, what about the pawns? Mm, four pawns, four pawns here and two pawns. So if to try to make the material balance, rook would be 5 points, 8 points plus the knight, 10 points. Well, it is somehow balanced, uh, I would uh, say. Uh, the material is balanced here, but black still has one huge problem, which is the weak king. Well, here h6 is a threat. White wants to play h6 and after g6 perhaps queen f6 check and then queen takes f7. So uh, that is the, re the reason why black had to defend the pawn by playing rook c to f8. h6 now anyway. g6. Queen f6 check. King to h7. Well here white can capture the pawn on f4 at any point. But I didn't want to hurry with that because of uh, some g5 maybe. And now if the queen wants to go back, then rook to g6. And well, somehow I felt that uh, all my pieces are going back. And here even I think I'm losing the pawn on e5. As there is no way to defend it with the queen. That's why after uh, king to h7, I played rook to c3. Attacking the knight. And also um, making use of the fact that the rook went from c8 to f8. Now it is impossible to defend the knight and uh, black has to go away somewhere with it. Probably the best way to continue with black would be to play rook d4 here. Oh, sorry, knight to d4 here. Always uh, one should remember that uh, the knight is a piece which uh, likes to be in the center as it has uh, 
much more uh, possibilities uh, to move from there. You see in the center we have eight possibilities to move with the knight. Oh, that arrow was extra. While let's say uh, in the corner, imagine that knight would be let's say on h1, then there would be only two possibilities for the knight to move. So when you are not sure where to place your knight, just have this in mind that uh, placing it in the center should always be better. Well, I guess that my knight h4 in the opening was a bit of an exception. <laughs> well, the, my opponent uh, for some reason preferred to play knight to d8. Maybe she wanted to defend uh, the pawn on f7 one extra time. But here I played queen to g5, making sure that this pawn doesn't advance to g5 like I've mentioned in the previous variations. So queen to g5, and you see that uh, black's position is somehow uh, awkward because it is uh, very difficult to move and uh, activate uh, the pieces. They are all on the 8th rank. And they don't have many possibilities to move from there. That's why black um, tried to play d4. Rook to c4 followed. d3 now. Well, her strategy was probably to distract uh, me with these pawns. Queen takes f4, making it to the to move uh, 40. Well, usually in this uh, classical uh, chess tournaments. You would get some extra time after you make your uh, move 40. Uh, it was the case there as well. So I happily got my 30 extra minutes. And my position is still uh, winning. Probably it's just a technical matter. But still white had to be precise. You know, actually there is a funny story about uh, the encounters I have with this opponent, Monika Sochko. We have played so many games against each other. And in the beginning I struggled uh, very much uh, when playing against her. I think uh, the score was like 3-0. Uh, I was losing all kind of positions. Winning positions, totally winning positions. Or sometimes I would get uh, outplayed. But then at some point the ice uh, broke and um, I managed to win a game, then another. But uh, still, uh, I, um, the conclusion was that I shouldn't ever relax. Because uh, every time it seemed that Monica had some trick for me there waiting. So uh, I knew that I have to be very precise until the end. Uh, the game continued with uh, g5, queen to e4 check, king takes h6, queen takes d3. Well, white has managed to win uh, one more pawn, so now it's just uh, rook, knight and pawn uh, against uh, the queen. Uh, black tried to make use of her um, past pawns and played f5. Of course, I had to capture back, e takes f6, rook takes f6, rook to c8 now, attacking the knight on d8, rook f to f8, queen to e3. Well, it is a useful move, I attack the pawn on a7 and in the same time I pin the pawn to the king and now it cannot advance. That's why she played king to g6, queen takes a7, g4. Well, the position is getting uh, somewhat dangerous, because if that pawn can uh, run for a few more squares, it will become a queen. But queen to e3, uh, preventing that uh, advance of the g-pawn. King to h5, queen to e5 check, rook f5, queen to h2, king to g6, and here... I have uh, regrouped uh, somehow, uh, well, regrouped, uh, repositioned, let's say, my queen. Now the pawn, the g pawn cannot advance, while well, I can play a4 and try to make my pawn promote to a queen. Why not? Rook to d5, 
rook to c4 attacking this pawn it is very important to keep an eye on it rook to g5 queen to g3 now blocking it so it won't be able to advance in the near future and also the pawn on g4 is now hanging king to h5 rook to f4 not letting the other rook to activate rook f5 now rook takes f5 would be a big mistake because uh, when these two pawns are linked then it is easier for them to advance because they are defending each other very well that's why i played queen to h2 check first i actually spotted some nice tactics the problem is that now uh, black's king doesn't have a good square to retreat uh, if the king goes to g5 well actually it's the most natural move now the last tactical blow rook takes g4 king takes g4 and queen g2 check and when the king goes away now just queen takes g8 and uh, we've liquidated um, this dangerous uh, g pawn and at the same time the knight on d8 is hanging and also now our pawns are the ones who will be uh, very dangerous the game continued with knight to f7 queen b8 check e5 and a5 i have the feeling that uh, the game did not end here mm, i suppose it continued for a few more moves but uh, black was unable to stop uh, white's uh, a pawn for from becoming a queen so eventually my opponent had to resign well this was the game we have somehow ran through it um, on a very high speed um, i hope that uh, you've enjoyed it i definitely had actually after this game i uh, still had time to play against uh, monica for one more time and uh, she made sure to take revenge by winning that game also in a nice style it is always uh, fun to play against her you know it is nice to have this uh, opponent against whom you have uh, big times big time battles time after time so i guess uh, the things to remember after this game is that uh, when you see that uh, your opponent is uh, cruising through the opening phase very quickly and you have the feeling that uh, you're into his preparation sometimes it it is a good idea to make uh, a somewhat uh, offbeat move like it was the move h4 in this game so that uh, it would be a real game you know not one when uh, you'll have to compete against someone's engine um, another conclusion is that when um, king's castle on the different sides it is the one who is uh, most uh, efficient with his attack uh, on uh, his opponent's king the one who succeeds and sometimes uh, you should uh, attack um, at all costs even at sacrificing a few pawns like i did first here when sacrificing the pawn on a2 and then uh, where it is this moment when i sacrificed another two pawns here well here it was with g5 you have to um, to imagine what position you would like to get to and try to make it happen well here i definitely saw that i'm struggling with my attack and i would want to open some uh, file next to black's king and that's how the idea with g5 came to my mind and also remember the nice uh, the nice expression which helped me and saved me quite uh, quite a few times that when uh, you want really want something but it's not possible just make it happen no matter what and the last thing the last thing to remember from this game is to never relax 
because uh, a point isn't a point until your opponent shakes your hand and resigns. There are chances um, one can get and you wouldn't want to ruin a nicely played winning position. So be aware of your uh, opponent's chances and uh, I wish you to have uh, very nice attacking games where you could sacrifice uh, pieces and deliver mate to your opponent. I'm sure that's, uh, that's the dream of every chess player. Now I hope that you have liked uh, this game and uh, if there would be no questions whatsoever in the chat, uh, I guess that would be it for today. So last chance for questions and for the chat to be a bit more active. Also don't forget to support the Friday with Irina show if you have liked uh, this stream and the other one. One uh, new show is coming, of course, as usual, on the next Friday. Perhaps uh, there will be time for, uh, for some other shows in between. We'll see about that. I'm thinking of um, playing a few online tournaments meanwhile. Tomorrow uh, I will play in a French Blitz uh, Open. Uh, if I manage to solve uh, all the technical issues, perhaps uh, I could also stream it. We'll see about that. And of course, the usual title Tuesday uh, tournament, which uh, I was uh, usually not streaming, but maybe I could uh, start doing uh, it from now on. Well, no questions coming, so uh, I guess that would be it. Uh, thank you for joining um, the show and I hope uh, you got inspired from, uh, from this game and you'll be able to deliver decisive attacks against your uh, opponent's kings as often as possible. Have a nice evening, guys. Bye-bye. Until next Friday.